Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of the Royal Society of Canada, I would like to congratulate all of the newly elected members of the college for your outstanding contributions to your respective disciplines. We are honoured to celebrate the importance of the contributions that you have made to this country and also to the people who live in it. Please join me in welcoming this year's members of the 2022 cohort of the College of New Scholars. Merci. Honorable invité, chers colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, bienvenue à la présentation du membre du Collège de la Société Royale du Canada. Welcome to the 2022 presentation of the members of the College of New Scholars, Artists and Scientists of the Royal Society of Canada. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta which includes the Blackfoot Cons Confederacy, comprising the Siksika, Pikani, Kakani Na First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. My name is Carly Kyo, and I am a professor of history and Canada research chair in Atlantic Canada communities at St. Mary's University in Halifax. I'm also the president of the college and I'm in the final days of my mandate. <laughs> Thank you. I am joined today in welcoming you by two colleagues and friends, wonderful people who have been very supportive throughout my mandate. Professor Frank Deere of the University of Manitoba, who will at the... <laughs> who will at the conclusion of the COEE be the new college president. And Professor Patrick Leroux of Concordia University, who is the college's secretary. We, along with the five other members of council and the wider college membership, want to congratulate you, new members, on your election, and you should be really proud of what you have accomplished over the years. Kunjokwa. So na kunsiyos kani karibasa. Ne gadi te tinuradu ne sungkwaetizum. Ne wahi rosa anyo te nohoda. Teo Tarwanya ne gado zi ohoat jade. A guego, Oscar, a titoa wet noni, ne unguatnigura, tano dieti nuorado, ne unguashua. Tano a guego, Oscar, titoa wet noni, ne guatnigura, tano dieti nuorado, de yet that ni stara, zi ohoat jade. Edo, neo tahak, ne unguatnigura. I offer to you the opening uh, pieces to the Ohando Gariwatekwa, the traditional opening of my people, the Ganyagehaga, of the Rodenoshone Confederacy uh, out east. And I do so whilst acknowledging the traditional territories of the peoples uh, that Carly just mentioned, uh, the Metis peoples, the Confederacy of the Blackfoot and others. I wanna say, and welcome to all of the new uh, inductees into the College of the Royal Society of Canada. Um, we are committed to such things as inclusive excellence. And it is this impulse towards changing the way we understand how we can contribute to the public good through our work that I think the college represents. And it's really exciting to see such diversity of thought of disciplinary area and other backgrounds that are joining our college this year. Nyaogoa. Nyaogoa, Frank. Il me fait plaisir d'accompagner nos nouveaux membres du collège dont les candidatures ont été triées sur le volet grâce à leur profil d'excellence académique, scientifique ou artistique. Beyond the symbolic honor of joining the college, these new colleagues will also become part of something larger than themselves. I encourage all of you to become involved in our activities, conversations, committee work, and to take full advantage of your seven years at the college to learn, contribute, and to connect to a network of smart, dynamic, and engaged researchers. 
Thank you. We are delighted to have 43 college members to present this afternoon. This morning, we are celebrating and welcoming you. An outstanding group of scholars, artists, and scientists whose expertise spans every field of research and who represent universities and organizations from coast to coast. On behalf of the Society, we would like to acknowledge the institutional support of the University of Toronto for their institutional support of this year's college presentation. The RSC is grateful for their continued support and for all of the support of our institutional members throughout our programming. I'd like to introduce Professor Barbara Fallon, who is the Associate Vice President Research at the University of Toronto. Good morning all, and thank you to Professor Kehoe for the kind introduction. I am thrilled to be here to congratulate the new members of the College of New Scholars, artists and scientists who are being presented today. Membership in the college is a wonderful honor that recognizes each of you as an emerging intellectual leader in your field. At this early stage in your careers, you have already made outstanding scholarly, artistic, and scientific contributions. Even more importantly, you are forging new directions in theory, methodology, interdisciplinarity that will lead to new discoveries in your fields. As I read through your citations as new members and observed your many contributions across a variety of fields, I am both thrilled and humbled. Today, you have the exciting opportunity not only to celebrate your achievements, but also to come together as college members for the first time. As you create new connections across fields, across disciplines, and across Canada, the colleagues that you will meet through the RSC College will enable you to explore new ideas and collaborative approaches to shared challenges. Being part of a network such as the college is at once an honor, a responsibility, and an incredible opportunity. I encourage you to fully engage with the college and your fellow members during your tenure as you strive to advance knowledge and impact in the fields and issues that matter most to you. I look forward to hearing more about your research today, and once again, a very warm congratulations. Before we proceed to this year's inductees, we are pleased to welcome some of our previous year's inductees who are attending this year's ceremony. It's for those who uh, joined while COVID was happening and we had to have virtual events, so this is an opportunity for them to share this day. The 2020 and 2021 induction ceremonies had to be held online, but they have been invited to cross the stage this year in order to experience something of a usual ceremony. I will begin by inviting Patrick to rejoin me on stage and to welcome each of these amazing members to come on stage, if you wouldn't mind standing in the middle as well for a photo, um, to be acknowledged uh, so we can prevent, present their academic citations. The first is Isabelle Archambault. Isabelle Archambault est titulaire de la chaire de recherche du Canada sur l'école, le bien-être des enfants et la réussite éducative et co-titulaire de la chaire Myriagon McConnell, pardon, Université de, Mo de Montréal, en mobilisation des connaissances en contexte jeunesse. Anchored in a social justice perspective, her work is recognized for its impact on the development of best practices supporting different populations of children. Ses travaux sont reconnus pour leur retombée sur le développement des enfants issus des, des milieux défavorisés, issus de l'immigration ou présentant des problèmes de santé mentale. Isabelle Archambault est membre du Collège de la Société royale depuis 2020. Isabelle Archambault. Genevieve Le Baron. Genevieve Le Baron is an internationally renowned expert on modern slavery, known for her research on the business dynamics of forced labor in global supply chains. Elle a notamment conseillé les gouvernements nationaux et les organisations internationales les plus investies dans la lutte contre le phénomène du travail forcé. She has had, held 10 research grants to investigate forced labor and has won awards for her role in pioneering a rigorous and comparable empirical evidence base on forced labor in the contemporary global economy. Genevieve Le Baron joined the College of New Scholars in 2020. 
Genevieve Le Baron. Catherine LaBelle. Catherine LaBelle is a Tier 2 Canada Research Chair in Pediatric Neuroimaging. Elle mène des recherches interdisciplinaires utilisant des techniques avancées d'image par résonance magnétique, IRM, pour étudier la maturation cérébrale et son lien avec les facteurs cognitifs, comportementaux et environnementaux. She is recognized for her foundational contributions to the understanding of brain development in typically developing children and those with neurodevelopmental disorders such as fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Catherine Labelle joined the College of New Scholars in 2020. Catherine Labelle. <laughs> Asma Saeed. Asma Saeed is a Tier 2 Canada Research Chair in South Asian Literary and Cultural Studies at Kwantlen Polytechnic University. Elle est une chercheuse et une intellectuelle publique de renommée internationale, connue pour ses recherches novatrices sur la littérature en langue patrimoniale au Canada. She is known for her interdisciplinary transnational approach to cultural production and her engagement with issues of equity, diversity and inclusion. Her current research focuses on South Asian Canadian artists. Asma Saeed joined the College of New Scholars in 2020. Asma Saeed. Noreen Kamal. Noreen Kamal is an engineer and researcher working to improve healthcare systems. She aims to improve the delivery of healthcare to match the progression of the disease. Depuis 10 ans, elle a travaillé à l'amélioration du traitement des patients victimes d'AVC. Her work has significantly improved patient outcomes across Alberta. She is currently working to improve access and efficiency of stroke treatment across the four Atlantic provinces. Noreen Kamal joined the College of New Scholars in 2021. Noreen Kamal. <laughs> Laura Rosella. Laura Rosella is an epidemiologist and award-winning scholar leading internationally recognized research. Elle utilise des données à l'échelle de la population et des analyses innovantes pour améliorer la santé de la population, le fonctionnement du système de santé, ainsi que réduire les inégalités en santé. She holds a Canada Research Chair in Population Health Analytics, the inaugural Stephen Family Chair in Community Health at the Institute of Better Health, Trillium Health Partners, and several leadership positions focused on building public health analytics capacity in Canada. Laura Rosella joined the college in 2021. Laura Rosella. Keisha uh, Superno, um, she wasn't able to join us. I love that. <laughs> Dr. Keisha Superno uh, is an internationally recognized Indigenous archaeologist. She is director of the Institute of Prairie and Indigenous Archaeology and an associate professor of anthropology at the University of Alberta. Ses recherches portent sur l'archéologie autochtone, la télédétection et les pratiques archéologiques centrées sur le cœur. She is at the forefront of supporting indigenous communities to locate unmarked graves around residential schools in Canada. Keisha joined the College of New Scholars in 2021. <laughs> Andrea Trico. Assessing up-to-date research is imperative for decision-making by patients, clinicians, and policymakers. But the vast, complex, available research is often inconsistent in findings and conclusions, making it impossible to use for decision-making. Dr. Tricot fait progresser la science de la synthèse des connaissances au sein des soins de la santé. Her research is used to inform Canadian and international knowledge synthesis groups on how to provide relevant, timely, and high-quality information to decision-makers. Andrea joined the college in 2021. Andrea Chico. <laughs> St 
Stephanie Willerth. Stephanie Willerth of the University of Victoria is a biomedical engineer and Canada Research Chair. Dr. Willerth engineers functional neuro tissue using human-induced pluripotent stem cells. Elle a développé une nouvelle bio-encre pour qu'elle puisse bio-imprimer ses cellules tout en maintenant des niveaux élevés de survie et de fonction cellulaire. Her fundamental discoveries directly impact the health and well-being of patients who suffer from devastating illnesses such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and aggressive cancers such as geoblastoma. Stephanie joined the college in 2021. Stephanie Willer. Once again, welcome all inductees from our previous virtual inductions. We are happy, really happy, to have you with us in person this year. As many of you know, the college was founded in 2014 with the idea of creating a pan-Canadian organization of Canada's top early and mid-career scholars, artists, and scientists where there would be no disciplinary boundaries. The college was designed to provide unlimited opportunities to think creatively about how the humanities, social sciences, sciences, and arts come together to confront some of the world's most urgent challenges. I was very fortunate to be part of the sixth cohort. As a member of college council, I've had the opportunity to see how the college has been working to fulfill this mandate and how it continues to make its mark on the RSC through direct involvement with RSC committees. We do this through public engagement activities, including the work of the COVID-19 Task Force and international activities relating to the G7 and G20 statements, as well as to developing a program to support our academic colleagues displaced to Canada due to war, conflict, or threats against the person. As stated in the RSC strategic plan, the main objectives are to mobilize the membership, catalyze new ideas, and sustain momentum. This cohort, your cohort, are the ninth one, and we look forward to working with you and to your contributions. This year also marks the graduation of our second cohort, those who started, the college in, started with the college in 2015. At this moment, we also say goodbye to them and welcome them as alumni. The college seeks not simply the best, but seeks excellence as demonstrated through academic, creative, and intellectual production, as well as the ability to speak beyond interdisciplinary boundaries and through community engagement. We are committed to inclusive excellence to ensure that we, the college, can say truthfully that we represent the best of Canadian research and practice. We are dedicated to equity, diversity, and inclusion. And as the next generation of university leaders in this country, and indeed a number of us already are university leaders, we have a responsibility to lead by example. So this year's cohort demonstrates this balance of scholarship and engagement. The incoming cohort consists of 43 new members, 24 women, 19 men, 36 identifying as English, seven as French. They come from 25 different institutions in all regions of the country. Three from BC, three from the Prairies, nine from, uh, from Ontario, five from Quebec, and two from Atlantic Canada. As with other years, we continue our tradition of the domino introduction of new co uh, college members. Uh, we've invited each new member to prepare an introduction for another new member of the college and we have asked them uh, basically to present a link between their research and the research of the person they are introducing. En prenant le temps de découvrir un autre membre travaillant souvent aux antipodes de leurs propres intérêts, nous visons à établir dès l'intronisation une curiosité envers le prochain, un début de dialogue interdisciplinaire et un mouvement vers l'inclusivité effective. So we're very happy to get this started, I think. And I'm going to kick this off by introducing Benjamin Hebkens. If you could join. Benjamin is an international leader in bioinformatics, 
the development of computational methods based on statistics and machine learning to analyze large, complex biomedical data. His work is improving the prediction of disease progression and therapy response cornerstones of predict precision medicine. He's a champion of transparent and reproducible research, exploring how cloud computing and software virtualization can improve the way data, analytical tools, and findings are disseminated. Our work connects in an interesting way. We both use the past to develop new approaches to the current and future challenges. While his work focuses on how cancer treatment might be made more effective, mine focuses on how we might develop better strategies for the integration of religious minority migrants. Thank you very much. Uh, J'ai le plaisir de vous présenter Dr. Arya Paul, professeur associé en génie chimique et biochimique à U uh, Western University en Ontario. Um, he's the head of the Bioingenuity and Therapeutics Engineering Lab, or BioIntel in short, where he and his team are developing new nanobiomaterials to be used in medical implants, as well as novel therapeutics, including tissue regeneration and wound healing. Uh, Dr. Paul and myself have surprisingly a lot in common. Uh, we both worked at McGill University. We both hold a chair, a Canada Research Chair, and we focus our research efforts on medicine. Also, our approaches are radically different, but complementary. And I have to admit, the name of his lab is way cooler. <laughs> Dr. Agia Paul. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, Namaskar. Uh, hi. I'm absolutely delighted to introduce Dr. Mireille Lalancet. Uh, Mireille Lalancet is professor in political communication at University du Québec à Trois-Rivières. She's a leader, uh, a leading scholar of social media in Canadian politics. Uh, her expertise is highly coveted by journalists and political institutions, uh, reflecting her impressive work in political communications, use of social media by politicians, uh, and women leaders in politics. Uh, while my area of research, as you just heard, is quite different, but our approaches are still quite similar. Uh, we both explore ways in which creation and exchange of new ideas between diverse groups and academic disciplines can positively influence our society and people's health. Felicities here, Dr. Lalanzet. Merci. Um, C'est à mon tour de vous présenter uh, Bayou Hélène Zhang. She's a professor the, in the Department of Civil Engineering at Memorial University, where she has a Canadian uh, research chair in coastal, coastal environment engineering. Dr. Zhang works at handling oil and emerging contaminants in marine and coastal environment. Elle fait en sorte que les pétroles et les contaminants ne polluent pas les environnements marines et côtiers. Elle est ainsi heureuse de faciliter le développement des communautés côtières canadiennes plus sécuritaires et saines. Alors qu'elle travaille avec euh, les océans, euh, de mon côté, je travaille avec euh, tout ce qui se passe dans les médias sociaux numériques. J'ai travaillé notamment sur, euh, euh, à documenter la, le cyberharcèlement des acteurs euh, politiques. Donc, euh, chacun à notre façon, on essaie de mieux comprendre la pollution, euh, elle dans les océans et moi dans les médias sociaux numériques. Merci et félicitations. OK, uh, thank you, Marie. Uh, I'm pleased to present Dr. Angela Kaida. Uh, Dr. Kaida is a professor and Canada Research Chair in Global Perspective in the HIV and Sexual and Reproductive Health in the Faculty of Health Sciences at uh, Simon Fraser University. Is a leading researcher in global health and HIV epidemiology. 
Her extraordinary community-based research and knowledge uh, transition uh, strategy uh, confront health inequities, transfer health research practice and services for women affected by HIV and in Canada and beyond. Uh, although I'm not an epidemiologist, um, my work on the environmental uh, engine uh, actually facilitated development of uh, the housing communities in Canada and beyond. So we share the same interest and quite similar output. Thank you. Thank you. Merci à tous. Maintenant, c'est mon plaisir de présenter uh, Dr. Xander Wang. Dr. Wang is a professor in the School of Climate Change and Adaptation at the University of Prince Edward Island. Dr. Wang is internationally recognized for his scientific contributions to the understanding of regional climate change, impacts through his pioneering work in high resolution, regional climate change modeling, statistical downscaling, and urban flood modeling. Although I am not a climate change scientist, I'm very grateful that there are climate change scientists here in Canada. And so um, I'm also a researcher to connect my work with yours. I am, uh, my research is also very much focused on changing environments and adapting environments to promote health, life, and longevity. So congratulations, Dr. Wang, and thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's my uh, pleasure to introduce Dr. Oliver Sonantak, a Canada Research Chair in Atmospheric Biogeosciences in High Latitudes from the University of Montreal. Dr. Sonantak has made significant contributions in improving our understanding of the impacts of climate change and human activities on the vulnerable permafrost landscapes in Canada. As a researcher myself in climate change, I fully appreciate the importance of Dr. Sonantek's work as it, as it can help us raise the public awareness of climate change and also, most importantly, motivate real climate actions. So Dr. Oliver Sonantek. Thanks, Dr. Wang, for the kind introduction. It's my great pleasure to, oops, excuse me. <laughs> I'm too fast, <laughs> sorry. Okay. So thanks, Dr. Wang, for the kind introduction. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Andrea Gonzalez. Dr. Gonzalez is professor agrégé au département de psychiatrie et de neurosciences comportementales de l'Université McMaster. Elle occupe aussi euh, le titulaire d'une recherche de recherche au Canada niveau 2. Et ses travaux portent sur les conséquences développementales des expériences néfastes vécues au cours de l'enfance et de la, de la transmission intergénérationnelle. Dr. Gonzalez has made major contributions in understanding and reducing adversity in childhood and in reversing the detrimental impacts of adverse childhood experiences. Bref, les recherches de Dr. Gonzalez ont grandement amélioré la vie des enfants et des familles, et, mais ont également eu des répercussions sur l'élaboration des politiques. And the link, my own research interests are more in physical science, clearly, but with a focus on the Northwest Territories, where I work closely with many indigenous communities across the territories. And I see great potential in Dr. of Dr. Gonzalez's research, helping, North, uh, helping to strengthen community well-being across Canada's north. Thank you very much, Dr. Andrea Gonzalez. Merci, Dr. Santak. I have the tremendous pleasure of introducing Dr. Nathan Sprague, Professor of Neurology and Neurosurgery and Director of the Laboratory of Brain Cognition at the Montreal Institute. Le Dr. Sprague étudie comme les régions de cerveau favorisant le fonctionnement cognitif et social tout à long de la vie. Interestingly, um, Dr. Spring's uh, studies are linked to my own uh, because the brain and cognition is impacted through early life adversity and it is also central to parenting processes, both areas of my research. 
His groundbreaking work will help us understand intergenerational transmission of risk and also targets of intervention. And again, in particular to my work, how we can improve parent-child interactions. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Professor Gonzalez. It is my great pleasure to present Dr. Megan Winters from the Faculty of Health Sciences at Simon Fraser University. Dr. Winters' intersectorial program of research aims to advance our understanding of how city planning and design decisions have a direct impact on the mobility, safety, and health of diverse urban populations. She engages decision makers and community groups at the intersection of health, urban planning, and transportation to generate the knowledge and tools necessary to build more livable, sustainable, and equitable cities. I see our work as spanning the broad ecosystem of health promotion from the public as well as to the personal. As urban planning and design decisions, they shape the physical living environments that are so crucial, crucial for psychological as well as brain health. So I look forward to our many discussions ahead and welcome Megan. Merci. C'est mon plaisir de présenter Dr. Aaron McNeil. Dr. McNeil works in interdisciplinary spaces, bridging population ecology, social science, and economics. His work is important and very timely for Canada and indeed globally as he studies how complex or how coastal systems and small scale fisheries are affected by multiple stressors and including climate change. So coming out of high school, my dream was to be a fisheries ecologist, which Dr. McNeil has accomplished. And I even studied seahorses for a while in the Philippines, and so we had a nice chat about those connections as well. Um, when I was reading through Dr. McNeil's work in advance of coming here, I suddenly saw parallels between epidemiologists, which is what I'm trained as, and those working in, in fisheries and population ecology that I hadn't sort of put together before. Um, we're both looking at, uh, I'm looking at patterns in human populations and conservation biologists looking at non-human populations, but we're really using similar observational methods and analysis methods in order to make change happen. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. I'm delighted to introduce uh, Professor Fiona Clement from the University of Calgary, uh, who works with governments and other decision makers to develop healthcare policy based on evidence. Dans ses recherches, uh, Fiona aide à réexaminer les systèmes de santé afin d'identifier et de modifier de, les domaines de pratique qui ne répondent plus aux besoins des utilisateurs. And in this, she focuses on the sustainability of healthcare systems and how to make optimal decisions to meet uh, long-term objectives for care. And while I work on decision-making as well, I think we should focus on the most important connection we have, which is that we both attended the University of Newcastle in Northern England, <laughs> uh, which means that we have a deep uh, and important understanding of the pubs of Newcastle, <laughs> it, including the Crown Posada, the bridge, and the free trade. <laughs> Professor Clement. Thank you, Erin. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Imad Shihab. Dr. Shihab is a Concordia University Research Chair in Data Analytics for Software Ecosystems. He's an award-winning, world-renowned leader in software engineering and software quality. Techniques and tools developed by his team have been adopted by major companies like Microsoft, the National Bank of Canada, BlackBerry, and Ericsson. The heart of his work is about making software more reliable. And while his work may seem far removed from my own, in our respective contexts, we are trying to achieve the same end goal. Solutions that are efficient, cost efficient, and offer improved customer, in my own context, patients, experience, and systems that people can rely on to offer consistent, high-quality care each and every time that they use it. Dr. Shihab also notes that he works with the brightest minds in the world, which is another common thread between us. Congratulations, <laughs> Dr. Shihab. Thank you. It is, uh, maybe I should start by saying, marhaba, ahlan wa sahlan. 
It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Kimberly Brownlee, who is a professor and Tier 1 Canada Research Chair in Ethics and Political and Social Philosophy at UBC. Dr. Brownlee is a leading expert in the areas of moral and political philosophy, the philosophy of social human rights, loneliness and belonging, and the ethics of conviction and civil disobedience. Although my work is in software engineering, I am very, you know, I'm looking uh, forward to many fruitful conversations and hopefully to take those to my stu engineering students um, about the impact of technology and particularly software uh, such as social, uh, social media uh, solutions uh, on human rights, loneliness, belonging, and civil disobedience. Congratulations, Dr. Bellman. Thank you. Uh, C'est mon plaisir de présenter Professor Amy Kraft de la Faculté de droit de l'Université d'Ottawa. Elle est l'une des plus éminentes spécialistes des traditions juridiques autochtones et du droit autochtone au Canada. Professor Kraft has devoted her career to deepening our understanding of Indigenous ways of knowing while promoting truth, reconciliation and decolonization. Fortement axée sur la communauté, Ses recherches explorent principalement le droit autochtone se rapportant à la protection de la terre et de l'eau, en misant en particulier les méthodes autochtones et la collaboration avec les communautés autochtones. Professor Kraft and I share a commitment to the promotion of truth, to protecting rights and to valuing all human lives. And I should say that I've been watching some of her lectures on YouTube on water and they are absolutely fascinating. Congratulations. Merci, Dr. Brownlee. À mon tour, j'ai le plaisir de vous présenter mon collègue, le Dr. Duminda Wijesundara. Uh, à partir de Unity Health Toronto, le Dr. vise à aider les individus dans leur récupération après les chirurgies. He assists pre-operative patients and post-operative um, patients to regain their full uh, levels of function and to prevent and treat post-surgical complications. He is, like me, a practitioner and a researcher, um, working directly with the people most impacted by his work. Félicitations, mon collègue. Thank you very much. So thank you so much, Professor Kraft, for your kind introduction. And now I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Melanie Noel, who is an Associate Professor of Clinical Psychology and the Killam Memorial Emerging Leader Chair at the University of Alberta at Calgary, as well as the Director of the Alberta Children's Pain Research Lab. Dans son laboratoire transdisciplinaire et son programme de recherche, Dr. Noël combine les méthodes de la psychologie, des neurosciences, de la génomique et de la médecine pour mieux comprendre les souvenirs de douleurs des enfants et les aspects psychologiques de douleurs aiguës et chroniques pédiatriques. So how does her work interface with mine? In truth, her work on the psychological underpinnings of pain inform not simply my research, but my clinical practice as an anesthesiologist, where every day I seek to better manage acute and chronic pain in the setting of surgery, and through my research program to understand the interplay between pain and for optimal functional recovery of patients after surgery. Congratulations, Dr. Noel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. I am delighted to present Dr. Charles Levko, a community-engaged leader who mobilizes partnerships to understand the connections between social justice, ecological regeneration, regional economies, and active democratic engagement using a food systems lens. Food security is intrinsically linked to water security. The right to food and clean water are essential components of a just and sustainable future. I do not study food security, but I am a pediatric pain researcher and believe like food security is a just and, you know, a human right, so is pain relief for children and people. Um, I'm so inspired by your work, um, which emphasizes community partnership and social justice. 
both of which are absolutely critical to incorporate in chronic pain research to address this rising epidemic. Congratulations. I have the great honor of introducing Dr. Manisha Kulkarni, uh, an associate professor in the School of Epidemiology and Health and Public Health at the University of Ottawa. Uh, Manisha's work explores socio-ecological determinants of vector-borne disease, and her training brings together medical uh, entomology and research in East Africa on malaria ecology and epidemiology. Uh, she works to find solutions that improve prevention and control of disease facing humanity. And her work addresses pressing issues uh, like climate crisis, the climate crisis and urbanization that really allow vectors to survive and reproduce in new places as well as the increasing human contact. And this really connects to my own work uh, on the impacts of environmental change as well as environmental justice and health equity specifically in respect to who is most impacted by all of these dramatic changes. So, congratulations. Very I'm very pleased to introduce Dr. Robert Mitzi from the University of Manitoba, who holds a Canada Research Chair in Queer Community and Diversity Education. Ses recherches portent principalement sur les interventions éducatives qui favorise le respect et la compréhension des personnes de SLGBTQ au sein des organisations. Dr. Mitzi's research has many parallels to my work in global health, given the importance of cross-cultural communication and the engagement of people from marginalized communities to improve equity in Canada and abroad. Congratulations, Dr. Mitzi. Thank you for the introduction, Manisha. J'aimerais vous présenter le Dr. Abel Broder, qui se spécialise en économie du développement, de la santé et du travail à l'Université de Ottawa. I would like to present Dr. Abel Broder, who specializes in development, health, and labor economics at the University of Ottawa. Although I'm not an economist, my work on social justice and inclusion relates to Dr. Broder's concern for the cost of social inequality. Our work matters. Congratulations, Dr. Broder. So I have the pleasure of presenting René Lozek of the University of Toronto, who is one of the world's leading young cosmologists. Ses travaux utilisent des analyses expérimentales et théoriques du fond diffus cosmologique et de la distribution à grande échelle des galaxies. Her work has also shed light on the size, age, geometry, and mass energy content of the universe. She uses data from the Atacama Cosmology Telescope and the upcoming Simons Observatory and Large Semantic Survey Telescope in Chile. Rene, my work has nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> I barely understand what I just read, but... <laughs> But from the bottom of my heart and from all of us, thank you for exploring the universe for us. <laughs> Merci bien. Je suis très heureuse de présenter Véronique Dupéré, qui est titulaire de la chaire de recherche de Canada sur la transition à l'âge adulte. She is also a co-holder of the Macdonald UDM Chair on Youth Knowledge Mobilization, Miragion. We share a passion. Her work aims to support educational success and social professional integration during the transition from adolescence to adulthood. And I care deeply about engaging youth in STEM disciplines so that they can see their future in the stars. Uh, je vous invite à vous joindre à moi, uh, à moi pour accueillir Dr. Dupéré. Hello, hi everyone. It's uh, really a great honor for me to introduce uh, Jordan Abel today. Um, so Jordan is an artist, a poet. Um, he's uh, Jordan is an écrivain Nisgaha. Is, is that right, the pronunciation? 
And Niska. Niska? Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Niska Queer, the Vancouver. Uh, he is the author of The Place of Scraps, Uninhabited, Injun, and uh, Niska. Is that right again? Yeah? Yes. Sure. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so, Abel's next project, a work of fiction called Empty Spaces, forthcoming from McClellan and Stewart in, is uh, forthcoming from McClellan and Stewart in 2023. Uh, so, Jordan is professor agrégé au département d'anglais et d'études cinématographiques de l'Université d'Alberta. Uh, je ne suis pas artiste moi-même, mais j'adore uh, les, les arts. Uh, J'aime lire énormément et j'admire énormément le travail de Jordan. Et uh, aussi, je, je partage vraiment un intérêt pour euh, le pouvoir évocateur du langage et des lieux que j'ai pu euh, lire au travers euh, de vos travaux. Donc, euh, félicitations, Jordan, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. Uh, I, I, I think, though, I, uh, after, after this conference, I'm going to pivot my research to domino introduction studies. <laughs> New, new area. <laughs> uh, I am delighted to introduce Dr. Trevor Lance uh, from the University of Victoria School of Environmental Studies. Dr. Lance's interdisciplinary research uh, program explores the causes and consequences of Arctic ecological change using remote sensing, fine scale field studies, and collaboration with indigenous experts. By identifying the factors that make some areas of the Arctic more susceptible to change, his research is making a meaningful contribution to northern decision-making and climate change adaptation. As, as a creative writer, I, I fa found, uh, found a connection really easily and right away, which I thought was beautiful. Uh, my, my fiction is engaged with finding ways of representing ecological change and violences that are slow moving and long in the making. And I am, I'm deeply looking forward to, to getting to know you, Dr. Lance, and congratulations. Thank you very much, Jordan. Uh, storytelling is really essential to the research that I do. And so it's a great pleasure for me to be able to introduce Dr. Susan Andrews today. Uh, Dr. Dr. Andrews is an internationally recognized scholar of East Asian religions, and her work focuses on the importance of storytelling, exploring the ways that narrative shapes religious practice, but also influences community and indivi individual identity. Dr. Andrews is also an award-winning teacher, uh, deeply dedicated to research-engaged learning and community partnerships. And the link, as I alluded to at the very beginning, in our work is storytelling. Really, storytelling to help us understand our place in the world, and in my case, storytelling to help us understand our place in a, a changing world. Congratulations, Dr. Andrews. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. It is a profound honor and joy to present Dr. Aisha Ahmed a globally recognized expert in international security. Author of the multi-award-winning Jihad & Co. Black Markets and Islamicist Power, Dr. Ahmed is director of the Islam and Global Affairs Initiative at the Monk School of Global Affairs, chair of the board of directors of Women in International Security, and serves in many other important roles. Our fields differ, <laughs> uh, but I see in our research a shared commitment to addressing relationships between economic, political, religious spheres. Uh, Felicitation, Dr. Ahmed, I look so forward to learning from and I hope coming to better know you in the uh, years ahead. Miigwech, thank you, merci, Dera Mirabani. I now have the profound honor of presenting Dr. Eric Lee from the University of British Columbia, who is rocking a fabulous UBC tie right now. <laughs> Dr. Lee is a leader in the field of social enterprise and innovation, whose work simply tears down the walls between subfields. It's really extraordinary. And his research uses an interdisciplinary and community-based approach 
to address wicked problems such as health inequity and food insecurity. And as I was learning more about Dr. Lee's work as an international security scholar, I study jihadist insurgencies and civil wars, and yet I'm confronted with these problems of food insecurity, famine, wicked problems in complex conflict zones. And so I am very keen to learn more about Dr. Lee's wicked, smart, multidisciplinary teams who are tackling these tough problems. Welcome, congratulations. So thank you. This is my honor to present Dr. Tristan Gata, who is currently a Canadian Research Chair Tier 2 in Big Data Infrastructures for Neuroinformatics and also the co-director of the Applied AI Institute at Concordia University. So although I'm not a computer scientist or information system researcher, Dr. Gertat's interdisciplinary approach adopts a very unique approach to connect computer science theories and methodologies with neural imaging and neural informatics. So I see some commonality between us because we approach health in different aspects of that. So in addition, Dr. Gattar is also advocating the importance of democratiz democratizing like big data research and also application through open source software and open science. Congratulations, Dr. Gattar. And I'm looking forward to exchange our insights to how to address the wicked problem through the interdisciplinary research in the future. Congratulations. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. J'ai le plaisir de présenter la Dr. Janelle Joseph de l'Université de Toronto. Dr. Joseph est l'experte canadienne des études critiques sur la race et le sport. Dr. Joseph is renowned nationally and internationally for her interdisciplinary research promoting anti-racism and intersectional inclusion through sports, leisure, and physical activity. Her activist work in black communities is especially impactful. Ses recherches ont transformé les politiques, l'éducation et la pratique en matière de sport et d'antiracisme de nombreuses organisations nationales. I am impressed and humbled by Dr. Joseph's work, which I find particularly impactful and inspiring as her approach and methodologies apply to a broad range of disciplines, including my own. Congratulations, Dr. Joseph. Congrats. It is my pleasure to introduce a member of Carleton University's music faculty, Jesse Stewart. Il est compositeur, percussionniste, artiste, chercheur, et enseignant. He has published widely on subjects including jazz, improvisation, hip hop, and experimental music. Il a reçu le Prix Juno 2012 de l'album instrumental de l'année. The essence of his projects that center inclusion of all people as musicians is also core to my work on access and belonging for all in sport and recreation. Congratulations, Dr. Stewart. Thank you, Dr. Joseph, for that kind introduction. I have the great pleasure of presenting Dr. Leila Soleimani, who is a university scholar and Canada Research Chair in the Departments of Engineering Physics and Biomedical Engineering at McMaster University. Dr. Soleimani's research is focused on developing biomedical technologies for rapid disease diagnostics and health monitoring, as well as solutions for reducing the spread of infectious diseases. Dr. Soleimani holds, holds several patents in the areas of biosensing, and biointerfaces. So for example, she developed a self-cleaning plastic wrap called, I believe, repel wrap that repels pathogens such as methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA, and the COVID-19 virus. Now, when I was preparing uh, this introduction, I was trying to think of a connection between uh, Dr. Soleimani's remarkable work uh, and my own background in the arts. And uh, I thought about repel wrap 
and, uh, and, and I realized that my music has repelled many people <laughs> over the years. But then I thought about music's capacity to bring people together, uh, which is actually one of the things that I value most about music. And it occurred to me that by, develop, by developing these innovative technologies that limit the spread of pathogens, Dr. Soleimani is also bringing people together at a time when we so desperately need one another and need to be together. So please join me in congratulating Dr. Soleimani. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I have the pleasure of presenting Dr. Nafisa Ismail, who is um, a professor at the Department of Psychology at University of Ottawa. And Dr. Ismail is dedicated to women's health research and to the prevention of mental illnesses. And surprisingly, my work has many parallel with Dr. Ismail's research as her impactful findings can guide us and lay a foundation for developing new diagnostic tools for women, women's health and also mental health. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Bonjour, j'ai l'immense plaisir de présenter le professeur Irvin Sejtik, um, qui est le titulaire de la chaire de recherche du Canada en intelligence artificielle pour les résultats de santé au North York General Hospital et professeur agrégé au département de génie électrique et informatique Edward Ace Rogers Sr. de l'Université de Toronto. He is a leader in the development of biomedical devices and the application of machine learning to better understand markers of disease, particularly as they relate to swallowing and gait. I am very happy to see that we both share an interest in understanding the mechanisms that underlie markers of diseases in the hope to create and improve quality of life in Canada and beyond. Congratulations, Dr. Sedwich. Merci beaucoup, Professor Ismail. Well, it's my great honor to introduce Professor Julia Christensen, Canada's research chair in Northern Governance and Public Policy, and an internationally recognized scholar in housing, home, and health in the circumpolar north. Her scholarship is at the forefront of efforts to understand the northern housing crisis and dismantle it through community-led solutions. Her collaborations with indigenous and regional governments have informed a series of policy initiatives that respond to the unique cultures and context of northern communities. When I was thinking about the connections between our work, first of all, that came to my mind was, wow, that's really cool. I want to participate in this experiment up north because it's really fascinating. But on a more serious note, I'm not a geography professor, but my work on wearable devices for monitoring of health outcomes in remote areas has many perils with her work. Congratulations. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour à tous. À mon tour, j'ai l'immense plaisir de vous présenter Dr. Sheila Garland qui est une psychologue clinicienne de renommée internationale dans les recherches conjuguent les domaines de la psychologie, de l'oncologie et de la médecine du sommeil. She applies sophisticated quantitative, qualitative and patient-oriented research methods to understand the influence that poor sleep has on cancer recovery. Though I'm not a clinical psychologist like Dr. Garland, my work on northern housing and indigenous housing also prioritizes the development of effective interventions to improve people's quality of life. So I really see this parallel in our efforts to use our research to improve health and well-being, um, to create positive change. As someone whose two grandmothers were cancer survivors, and I'm sure cancer has uh, touched the lives of many people in this room, uh, I thank you so much for your commitment to improving their sleep which is underappreciated, but so important. 
Thank you. Congratulations. I have the pleasure now of presenting Dr. Sharmista Mishra. Her research on the risks and spread of infectious diseases and the implementation of public health programs has real world applications, including how we understand the COVID-19 pandemic. L'impact de ces recherches est ressenti non seulement en Ontario et au Manitoba, mais aussi dans d'autres endroits comme l'Inde, le Konya, l'Afrique du Sud, l'Ukraine et le Sierra Leone. Although I am not a risk physician or a mathematical modeler, it appears that our research is similar in that it attempts to solve practical problems that can improve the lives of individuals and communities. Congratulations, Dr. Misha. Thank you and namaskar. I have the honor of introducing Dr. Patricia Palufo Silviera. Dr. Silviera's research has provided fundamental insights into how perinatal and early childhood environments can shape and modulate both health and disease across the lifespan. As a pediatrician and neuroscientist, her work disentangles how genetic and epigenetic markers interact with environmental adversities in childhood, modifying endophenotypes, impulsivity, sensitivity to reward, food choices that ultimately affect healthy growth and neurodevelopment. In reading her work, I have found her work so compelling given its parallels with my research on how structural factors and structural shocks can shape the dynamics of epidemics. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to present Dr. Daniel Walesi, who's a professor in the Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at the University of Alberta. Dr. Alessi is an expert reconnu dans l'utilisation de la géochimie et de la géomicrobiologie pour résoudre les problèmes complexes liés à l'environnement et aux technologies vertes. Our research programs share the interest on the complexities of the environment. While I focus on how genes and environment interact and affect child development, Dr. Alessi is a leader in modeling the cycling elements of the environment and in creating remediation technologies to extract contaminants and resources from water and soil. Parabéns, Dr. Alessi. Thank you for the kind introduction. I have the privilege of introducing Deborah Thompson, uh, who is uh, the Canada Research Chair in Racial Inequality in Democratic Societies at McGill University, uh, and is an internationally recognized expert on the comparative politics of race. Ce research porte sur les relations entre la race, l'État, les politiques publiques et les inégalités au Canada et ailleurs. She is the author of the award-winning book, The Schematic State, Transnationalism and the Politics of the Census in 2016, and The Long Road Home on Blackness and Belonging in 2022. Connected to Dr. Thompson's research, I am interested in conducting studies that support policies to ensure the equitable and transparent allocation of resources to all members of Canadian society and beyond. Congratulations, Dr. Thompson. Hello, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jérôme Duprat. Professor Duprat est titulaire de la chaire de recherche du Canada en économie et écologique et spécialiste mondialement reconnu de l'évaluation socio-économique de la biodiversité. His research on socioeconomic modeling, natural infrastructures, and environmental governance parallel some of the core concerns of my own work. That is, how it is we can use public policy to create a better world for everyone. While we are both committed to using research in the service of the public good, I would like to note that Dr. Duprat is also a bassist in a pretty amazing Quebecois band, um, which makes him both multi-talented multi and I'm 
sure we can say cooler than me. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Deborah. Bonjour tout le monde, j'ai aujourd'hui le grand privilège de vous présenter Sonja Boone. Dr. Boone is an award-winning researcher, writer and teacher whose work addresses the complex issues of migration, memory, gender, bodily experience and identity as these are live and experience. Interdisciplinaire et pluridisciplinaire, ses recherches ont été saluées pour les innovations méthodologiques et les contributions théoriques qu'elles ont apportées. Her groundbreaking research has been praised as being extraordinary, valuable, and critical to gender studies and beyond. Sanja, uh, vous et moi, nous sommes des artistes, des scientifiques et des militants. Nous étudions des thèmes conjoints comme la diversité, qu'elle soit humaine, qu'elle soit biologique, la pluralité des cadres de valeurs. Mais au-delà de tout ça, je suis convaincu que nous avons choisi de nous engager dans le monde académique parce que nous croyons que les arts et la science peuvent changer le monde pour le rendre plus durable, juste et euh, humain. Bravo. Merci, Jérôme. I have the pleasure of presenting Dr. Sandra Rian, an international leader in the molecular ecology and behavioral genetics of bees. Ses recherches combinent la génomique comparative et la sociodémographie pour fournir des informations essentielles sur la diversité, le déclin et la durabilité des abeilles sauvages. We work in very different areas. I work on uh, identity, belonging, embodiment, and feminist theory, but we're both interested in the life stories of individuals and communities and the environments that shape them. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Boone. Um, I have the pleasure, I guess, of wrapping this up um, <laughs> and presenting Dr. Carly Kehoe. Uh, she's a Canada Research Chair in Atlantic Canada Communities. Uh, she's quite inspirational in her commitment to public engagement and also an advocate for academics displaced due to war and conflict. Although I'm not a historian, uh, my work in sociobiology has many parallels with her expertise in group relationships and migration. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, we also have one more uh, person that we want to acknowledge. While some of our colleagues from Newfoundland managed to make it, one of them didn't. And I know she was all packed at the airport, camped out, trying to get here. She's only going to get here tonight. So we would also like to recognize Amanda Bittner of Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador, who wasn't able to join us for this ceremony. Amanda is a political psychologist studying elections, voting, and public opinion. She is Canada's leading expert on how voters perceive and evaluate party leaders and the impact those opinions have on elections. Through her public-facing scholarship, Bittner's work is transforming public and political dialogue. Together with everyone who has joined us on stage today, we should welcome her to the new, to the new Scholars Class of 2022. So I'm just going to conclude with a short and sweet comment. We are an active college. We have a social mission, and we look forward to working with all of you and to your contributions. Please do not hesitate to reach out and start something. We now welcome you all to continue the celebration at the celebration lunch in the Imperial Ballroom 579, which apparently is right behind me. But if you would join me once more in congratulating this group, that would be wonderful. Thank you to everybody. Thank you.